What is going on people of the Smart Society? Matt here from mksmarts.com and in this video I'm going to show you how I made my sports sign. So those of you not from America, we have this thing called the Super Bowl where the two best NFL teams from the AFC and NFC division face off. And this year it is, or this season, it is the New England Patriots versus the Rams. And me personally, I am a New England Patriots fan. So I made this sign about a couple years, maybe one or two years ago, but this was the year that I finally made a uh, Wi-Fi controlled version so that way I can control it from my phone as well as the Amazon Echo Google Home and all of those good smart home devices and home assistant. So this right here is the New England Patriots logo. So first let me give you a demo of everything that it can do. So this right here is called the border effect. And so it has all the middle LEDs stationary and then it just goes around in sort of like a snake fashion around the sign. And then there's another effect which I like to call follow, which it goes through each of the LEDs. It starts off with the three border zones, and then it goes to the face, then the blue part, and then the red part. The last effect is where it does both. It does the border and the follow at once. This one is my personal favorite, and I can adjust the speed however I want. So I can make it really fast, or slow it down and make it very slow. I'll show you guys the controls in a bit. But not only do you have effects, but you can also set it to none. And you can just have the entire sign lit up at once. Or you can individually control each individual zone. And now let me show you that it can be controlled from Alexa. Alexa, turn on sports sign. And there you go, she turned on the sports sign. And it can also be controlled from Google Home and Siri. Now let me show you guys all the controls from the software side. All right, so here are, here are the individual controls. This is from OpenHab, but it also works in Home Assistant. Actually, let me show you guys Home Assistant really quickly. Bam, there it is. And if we scroll down, we have all the different things for the sign. So it's exactly the same thing from OpenHab and Home Assistant. So since we're in Home Assistant, let's just do it from here. So I can turn off, let's turn off the entire sign. You can turn off the entire sign, turn on the sign, um, but let's turn it off and then you have all the individual ones. So this is border three, border two, border one, red, uh, and then we have the face plus the star and we have the blue. And then if you turn on the effects, you can select the effect from here and then we can do border and it'll do the border. We can do follow and then we can do both. And then using the brightness slider, you can adjust the speed. There you go, it's going a little bit crazy over there. Now, I have noticed that from the camera's angle, it looks kind of exposed. It looks a lot better in real life. And so now let's get rid of the effects and set it to none. Let's just turn on the sport sign and all of the different things. All right, now that we've gone over controls, and again, it is the same thing in OpenHab. There you go. Except in OpenHab, you just have a thing that says effects right here and your slider is right here. But we'll talk about how to get it into OpenHab and Home Assistant later. Now let's go ahead and take a tour around what all the components are and how it works. So the actual sign part of it is made on stainless steel. And so uh, I had this laser cut, so it cut each individual hole for all the LEDs. I designed it in CAD software and then exported it as a DXF file and had it cut out. Uh, so the LEDs were manually put into each slot. Uh, we'll look at the back later, but from the front, you can just see just the LEDs and the LEDs were pushed in from the back. All right, so this is the back of the sign. As you can see, we have all of the LEDs run. We have on the border side, every three LEDs is connected. So that way we have that cool effect. Then all the blue LEDs are connected and they're all just simply pushed in. There's no hot glue. So only uh, friction is keeping it in place. Just taken a tour each one of these were soldered together and then we have one gray cable that's coming from the sign and then from the sign it it goes into the control box right here 
and so there's just one connector this connector is detachable so you can remove it and it is all being powered by this power supply from an old laptop and this is a 16 volt power supply so let's go ahead and take a tour uh, inside the box and let me show you all the components that it's using so this is a 3d printed enclosure i designed you have vents on both sides of it and then on the bottom there's nothing you have the port for the sign and then you have your input ports for the power but let's go ahead and open it up and take a look so the top cover was only held in by two screws over here and then you can just simply lift this up and slide it forward and here we have all of the electronics that's controlling the sign uh, over here we have the input and you can detach the sign from the pcb there we go it's just a seven pin connector and it's a terminal block so that way you just plug it in uh the reason i have it on another PCB underneath here is because I accidentally chose when I was designing the PCB I chose the wrong um, terminal block or terminal connector and then over here we have the power this is in a JST connector and then we have seven buck converters and so the reason I have different buck converters for each uh, individual channel is because each LED draws a different amount of voltage so in order to do that I uh, have individual buck converter so I can choose the exact voltage for each LED so for example the red LEDs they use a lot less power than the white LEDs so this is at 2.2 volts so another thing that I kind of messed up on the PCB design is I was going to use a more complex um, circuit not really more complex but a different way to controlling it but that didn't end up working uh, shout out to the people on my discord I think it was Zbot uh, he helped me out and a bunch of people on my discord so if you guys are not on the Discord, jump on. There's a link in the description below. Also, shout out to the people on Reddit that helped out. And so then I had an enable pin coming from each buck converter, and that goes directly to the ESP8266. That's why it bypasses these little circuits. I just uh, bridged the transistor, so that way the buck converters are directly connected to the 16 volts, and then you just turn on and off the buck converters. So that's going to the ESP. Also, when I was designing the PS the PCB, I forgot to include a, a ground for the ESP, so I manually took a wire and did the ESP that way. When you're designing these things, you can never get them right the first time. And then you have your programming headers, you have your header that chooses if you're in run or program mode, then you have your 5 volt to 3.3 volt converter, uh, you have your power pin, so this is how you choose uh, to turn on and off the ESP, so that way when you're programming, you're not feeding voltage back into the buck converter. So this buck converter powers the ESP. It converts the 16 volts to the five volts and then the five volts to 3.3 volts. And then these are for the sign itself. And that's it for the electronics part. Here is another PCB. And I got this PCB from PCBWay. PCBWay is a company that specializes in PCB prototyping, PCB assembly, and SMD stencil. In this video, we will be using a PCB that was made by PCBWay. As you can see, the PCB is high quality and very nicely made. If you use the cash code on the screen, you can get $5 on PCBWay. I was going to do this differently. I was going to have a transistor and then I was going to have, use these resistors for voltage dividers, but this didn't end up working. And if you want to know more about why it didn't work, then check it out on the Discord. I talked about everything on there, but luckily it was a simple fix. I just bridged the transistor, so I put solder on all of this. And then I directly connected the enable pin to this right here, which goes directly to the ESP. So this is the front of the PCB, and here is the back. I didn't put any components on the back. Everything fit nicely on the front, as you can see here. And then inside the enclosure, it's just held down by four screws. All right, now that I talked about the hardware, let's get into the software. All right, so now let's talk about how I did the software part of this. I won't be going into too much detail because I figured that if you guys can make the sign, you can pretty much figure out the software. And... It's pretty much the same thing that I usually do for my devices. Yeah, the first thing you would have to do is get the bin file from my website, connect the Arduino using the TX, the TX pins. You just have to match them up to the device. So you just match TX to TX, RX to RX, ground to ground, and 5 volts to 5 volts. Make sure the programming pin is in program mode. Then flash the bin file onto the device using Pi Flasher. Once that's done, you put the jumper back into run mode. I would like to make one more note, and that is uh, after you program it, make sure you don't put in the jumper for the power, make sure that's disconnected. Set the voltage first on the buck converter to five volts, 
this one that is going to the 5 volt the 3.3 volt converter make sure that's set to 5 volts first and then you can put in the jumper to control this also before you plug in anything into this side uh, make sure you set all of your butt converters to the, your desired voltages beforehand. And you can simply do this by using alligator wires and a multimeter. You open up, you plug it into the wall, you open up settings on your phone, then you go to Wi-Fi, connect to the Wi-Fi network of the device, and type in your credentials for your Wi-Fi, your MQTT server, and your web updater page. Once that's on, you press save, and then we get into connecting it to either Home Assistant or uh, OpenHab. So this is on the screen, the Home Assistant config that you put in your configuration.yaml file. You will need to have MQTT uh, installed already, but here it is on the screen now. It'll also be in the description below as well as on my website. And then for OpenHab, you just need to put this in your items file, also in the description below. And then you need to put this in your sitemap file. And then in terms of how I connect, uh, control this from Amazon Echo and from Google Home as well as Siri, all I did was do the respected things on OpenHab or Home Assistant. So for example, in OpenHab, I put in the, the switchable tags for the switches to control all the individual things. Now, as many of you have noticed, I didn't go into too much detail as I normally do on my devices. And that's because I figured that most of you won't be making this. This is just a video where sharing what I did and also some ideas for you. So if you had a sports team that you really liked, uh, you can also do the same thing. And there's a, just a general concept for you to uh, look at and understand and just give you ideas overall. And if you have any questions, obviously in the comment section below, uh, join the Discord. You can uh, ask me questions on there, ask other people there, uh, or even on the forum, mksmarthouse.com slash forum. But just because I love this sign so much, let me show you guys the effects and everything it can do all over again. So the first thing is you can turn on and off all the LEDs and you can turn on each individual set of LEDs. And then lastly, we have the border effect where it moves around the border. Then you have the follow effect where it jumps from the different zones. And then lastly, you have both where it does both the follow and the border. This one's my personal favorite because I think it's more like flashy. And I just love how it works, especially if you speed it up like that. All right, guys, if you found this video enjoyable or helpful at all, smash that like button. If you're a smart home enthusiast like me, then press that subscribe button. All right, if you have any questions, leave in the comment section below or head over to mksmarts.com slash forum or head on over to the Discord where we have a nice community going there and I want to expand it more. But other than that, see you guys in the next video.